So I saw this theory online that Aegon Targaryen is actually not the father of Helena's children, but in fact his younger brother Aemon is. This theory is only based off of what we've seen in the TV show, because if you look in the book Fire and Blood, there's no mention of this, unlike what we get with, you know, Rhaenyra, Harwin, and Laenor. So I did a bunch of research, and I found out that there's one clue that no one is talking about, and it's a huge clue, and I think a lot of people wrote it off as uh, a writing mistake by HBO, but I think it's the missing piece of this puzzle that we will reveal to you by the end of this video, and you, you will be thinking to yourself, wow, I guess Aemon is the daddy of uh, Helena's children. But before we get into this, I want to ask you, Gator, what do you think about this theory? And do you think this theory is true? Dude, this thing is true. This is true. You know, this is really for me just addressing the elephant in the room because I actually think that there's plenty of evidence to show this without this mystery magic clue that you're talking about here. And we're going to go into it. But in general, I, I, I fully agree with this. I think it makes way more sense that Aemon is the father of these two, both with and without... Um, like hard evidence, but yeah, we'll go into it. Well, what I like about it a little bit is that it adds complexity within the green side, that it seems very straightforward what everyone's doing. Uh, on that side, there's no like kind of love triangles really going on. You know, there might be an Alicent uh, affair, what you want to say, with Christian Cole. Hopefully not with her feet because Larry's oh, come on. double coating that, making it look like Krispy Kremes down there if he had his way. But, you know, everyone else is pretty straightforward. I guess we'll get maybe... Uh, and maybe that that goes into things I don't like about this is we we know later on Eamon is going to have some sort of uh, relationship, and I don't know how this would impact it because I, I guess what I like about it is that it drives home that Eamon is the more duty bound figure than Aegon is, right? And Eamon is, is yeah. willing to step into the void and go. And I I don't think in my theory of this and my my whatever head canon I see right now, I don't see Eamon as going. Oh, I love dude, I just want to clap those cheeks so badly. It's more so like, someone must clap them. I'll do it. I'll I'll jump on the grenade. <laughs> you know? Someone's got to clap those cheeks. He's the guy at the uh, in the Dark Knight where he goes, fine, no one wants to do it? I'll do it. Yeah, I don't care. A Aegon had his chance, and now I will fill the void <laughs> and have children. I see, I'm not even sure it went that far, man. Like, in, there's, a, there's a world where I see Aegon just straight up asking Aim, and it's like, listen, man, my wife's got to be pleased. Our parents are expecting something out of us. I just don't want to do it. I'd rather be at flea bottom, you know, just dropping my load and anything I see, which he does, by the way, Aegon the second. He is down there just making right. bastards left and right. So, and I think, I'm guessing those are more his type of women or whatever. And listen, far be it for me to say that uh, your own biological sister wouldn't be prime material for you to get turned on by, but apparently maybe it's just not Aegon's thing. You know, he's the one in a million in Westeros. But I, dude, I think there's a real possibility that Aegon is aware of it and completely okay with it. And you're right, though. Aemon being uh -huh. duty-bound, it, it actually lines up with their characters a lot better, and it creates that little bit of distinction from uh, Damon too. Because Damon's, you know, Aemon is kind of seen as like little Damon Jr., right? He's just kind of the Green's parallel right. of it, but they're actually very different individuals. Like, we don't see any kind of semen retention grind set or whatever from Aemon, but I think him having kids with Hel Helena actually makes a lot of sense for the duty-bound purposes you mentioned. And also, too, he is a schemer, and we know that he wants to actually have the throne for himself, or at least be in power see that's the that's the weird part too i'm not sure if he would be satisfied in a behind the scenes role kind of like otto is because otto is running the show you know with egg on the second in charge i don't know right. if Eamon would be satisfied with that or if he wants to be not only have the power but to be seen having the power and if so being the biological father to these kids really puts him in that position of power at least be like secure himself as being next in line if something happened to Aegon, whether or not that be related to Eamon, dude if the secret could come out and Helena could even confirm, like, yeah, dude, these bastards, these are actually Eamon's kids. In no way are they related to Aegon. The, the succession falls to Aemon. Well, I'm just saying, the succession falls to well, Aemon right then and right. there. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about that. Well, we're going to talk about that later, too, about um, what would be the ramifications of this and uh, maybe a little bit of spoiler yeah, sure, sure. talk later on here. But, yeah, I agree. So I think Aemon is way more, like... He feels like more Stannis than Tywin. With Tywin is uh, content with, you know, being the hand, pulling more strings, you know, being the face of it, but also being the one truly in power. And uh, Aemon would rather be the Stannis, right? I am the rightful dude, you know, ruler. The I first, am the, the one first that Cyclops was... king. That's revolutionary. Oh, dude, that's... Could you imagine? Well, so something you said earlier too that uh, Aegon is going down to Flea Bottom to get his, you know, his rocks off. I'm wondering what he actually needs. Like, there might be some weird, you know, uh, foreplay, some, like, you Maybe know, just... you ever heard of Fin Dom? Have <laughs> yeah, you ever heard yeah, of Fin Dom? Dom? Yeah, of course. Y yeah, he might not be getting that uh, with with uh, Helena because they're both rich. 
right? What are you going to do to him? You know, you don't need it. Oh, yeah, right. Maybe he likes spending his coin. Maybe, well, it, so his seed does work, right? So it works. Well, I guess one thing is, what what does he need in the bedroom? And the second is, we know his seed works. If his seed didn't work, it would also be a better, it'd be like the inverse of Team Black, and you'd have the green saying like, hey, listen, yeah, we know this guy can't, uh, he's, he's not fertile. So we're going to get his brother, who looks identical to him. Well, identical, like genetics yeah, 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 right. wise. Same traits. Yeah, to step into the void, unlike what Nier did, which was like, hmm, I, I need a black guy with white hair. Hmm, can I get this white guy with black hair? Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, maybe, on, maybe Nier, it's dude. like a it's a flip of the coin, right? The colors are there; It just depends on where they land on the on the baby. That's all that matters. But I totally agree with that. I think there's a decent possibility that it's just okay. We've seen Aegon's debaucherous behavior, right? Like he's shooting loads out of his window or whatever, and people come and slap his ass while he's doing it, whatever whatever gets him off, right? He's right. having sex with the maid because mm -hmm. there's this power dynamic. He's kind of like Joffrey in a way where he really gets off on unique kind of power stuff, except Joffrey, I don't think, ever got off sexually. He was more of like an asexual being. But Aegon's taking that right. full step to be to be uh, sexually turned on by this stuff. I highly doubt Helena is going to be able to do it for him. It just doesn't turn him on. And I don't think that has anything to do with the family stuff either. I think it's just the fact of, I mean, look at her, dude. She has to be a dead fish in the bedroom. She has to oh, be, yeah. man. She's yeah. You think your girl's star fishing? Just wait till you see Helena, and dude. Absolutely. And it's the rich thing you mentioned too. I think that actually <laughs> contributes to it, man. It's like if you're rich, you don't have to put out any effort or put forth any effort. You already have everything right. you need. Whereas these women in Flea Bottom, it's like I bet you one brothel has a full set of teeth between them. So they're going to be doing some crazy shit, man. Like feet behind the head. I, I don't know. I like the idea that Helena's in bed. And whoever's, you know, doing this, whether it's Aegon attempting at one time or Aemond, you know, doing it for the children, mm. that Helena, that one of them during the, the session looks down at Helena and, like, like, puts their finger on her neck being like, is she alive? <laughs> like, she's not even, like, breathing. <laughs> dude, I, like, she looks dead. Like, that's how, like, vision, motionless. Dude. She's not even moaning in any. Well, this is what I want, too. Can, I, can we get more, like, duty-bound sex scenes? Like, enough of this passion shit. Let, let's just show two guys, or, you know, no, two guys, you know. Okay, well, maybe two guys. A guy and a girl. Oh, I don't care. You know what? I'm not going to be yeah, picky. Let's just see two, two, two individuals in the bedroom, not liking what's going on, but having to do it to completion. To get almost like uh, the episode one of Black Mirror, you know, I'm just right. in here to yeah, do my to job. The pig. I, I got to do this and I get mean, out. Helena kind of yeah. piggish. I mean, but th and it would be like jerking off in real life, right? This is a chore. You're not getting uh -huh. romantic with yourself. I mean, no joke. We, we, you and me, we both do know a guy who likes to get romantic with himself, like four to six hour sessions, which is just unbelievable. But in reality, <sighs> like, come on, dude, in the modern day, it's like taking a bath. Like, how much time I do you know, have? You, you don't take day, baths. Dude. If you take baths, unsubscribe, please. But if day to day life, man, if you got to jerk off or do whatever, this is a quickest possible thing. This is a chore. You get it done, and that makes for a more realistic sex scene in these type of situations. I 100% agree with you. That is what I would want to see as well. I, you know what, though? Part of me wonders if Eamon would even be like that with Helena because I wonder he's got like a hard exterior, but he might have a soft heart of gold, and I think we might end up seeing a passionate scene out of him no matter what. Like you said, you know, there's going to be a moment later on down the line here in the story where he does enter a relationship, and something tells me it's not just going to be a clap 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 uh, and then you're done you know i don't think that's what it's gonna be oh yeah a little more simp going on a little more like oh can you can be my mommy kind of thing going my on si Is that what my sister thinking, or what? mommy yeah i do exactly i don't think so i think he i think that's just his nature and the thing is too you know we can make all the assumptions we want and only time will tell but later on when we do get that scene i think that however he behaves with that woman retroactively now we have to assume he behaved the same way with helena so i i don't know we'll see we'll see I, it makes sense too if this theory is correct, right? That Amond is the father and he has sexual relations with his sister instead of his brother, uh, instead of not with his brother, but you know, instead of Aegon being there. Well, I mean, I guess I we can assume Amond is not having sex with Aegon as well. Uh, now that we're just talking about it, but I think uh, I think it makes sense that Amond blue sapphire in his his uh, eye socket is something for Helena. Maybe that's for her to look at because they're not making eye contact in bed because you know she's like. It's not even star fishing. It's like dead body. You know, she's oh, just right. pretending she, to be she's dead zoning the whole time. out. She's zoning so, out. So he, yeah, so he puts the blue sapphire in there to like keep her attention, keep her locked in because maybe he needs eye contact. <laughs> just, right? She needs she needs constant stimulation. This is one way to. It's like key jangling, right? You got to keep her focused. Like hey, right. hey, hey, over here, over here, hey, over, over here. here. <laughs> it's like, it's like, man. Yeah, no, maybe that is what it is. There's got to be something involved there. She's just too absent. No one puts a fucking sapphire in their eye for like to be badass and cool. It's like. 
there has to be some simp nature. Uh, I don't know, there man. Because be but no, dude. Do you remember when he revealed that thing to Luke? That was just cringe, dude. He wanted the he whole. He was trying to he, get him to nut in front of everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's what oh. he wanted to do. Dude, Boris would have laughed at Luke so it would have been so embarrassing for Luke, the biggest bald guy yeah. in the realm, laughing at you on his stone throne. It was cringe, though, man. When he when he revealed that thing to the whole crowd, he waited till he was in an audience. He could have revealed that thing to Luke or Team Black at any point. No one knew he had it. No one, if they did know he had it, we would have definitely seen some scenes where everybody's mocking him. Because, like you say, no one puts it. I guess I shouldn't say mocking him, but it's kind of an observational thing, right? It's like, you know, they're make they're doing yeah. war plans. They're talking about the future. Rhaenyra's having another miscarriage or whatever, and uh, you know, Damon's mm -hmm. like, "Hey, did you take a look at Aemon's eye?" like was that a sapphire in there it's like oh dude i thought the exact same thing like who does that shit so no one had seen it by this point he revealed it to luke as he was trying to show off in front of everybody i don't think that aspect's for helena so you, so you don't think it's for helena it's just for his own like edge lordness i think maybe because he acted maybe. like it was a like it was an amazing trap card he had like waiting for his opponent dude, i know so yeah exactly like, oh you just activated my trap card <laughs> sapphire eye <laughs> like damn what am I going to do? He threw a knife at me, and I have to obey his next command. <laughs> yeah, we're fighting to the death now. I mean, to be fair, Luke did die in the next scene, so maybe it worked. But no, I don't think it's for Helena yeah. at all. I think maybe double purpose. Maybe it's a happy coincidence that, like, he's just dealing with this dead fish situation, and then he gets this eye, like, thinking about this future plot to reveal it to Luke in front of a crowd and try to get some badass points, which he did not get, by the way. And then it just so happens that next time he has sex with Lena, which he does probably frequently... Uh, she gets distracted by this thing, maybe starts tapping it with her fingernail, you know? Just something to show she's engaged mm -hmm. in the situation. And I think that's probably right, what it right, is, right. if anything. So, is there reasons why you hate this theory? I, I got maybe two. I really don't hate this theory, but if it is true, there's only two things that kind of irk me about it. But uh, first, you want Yeah, I guess maybe. I don't hate it necessarily, but with the, something I don't like is it, it's kind of like a really selling too hard almost how irresponsible Aegon is. Because it's just like... I guess I don't see a world where Aemond would do this behind the back of Aegon. I mean, I guess I could, but we, we keep talking about how Aegon is so duty-bound. I think that would also extend to not keeping massive secrets like this from the king. And I also don't think Helena would be super uh, quick to keep something this big from Aegon. So I think Aegon is probably okay with it. I have right. no doubt about that. But I think if he's in on it, it just makes him seem really, really irresponsible. Because then he has to know that if something does happen to him it could come out easily that they're not his kids and then uh, you know they could send the Roman to chaos kind of by giving the Targaryens such a bad look compared to what they already have which is a bad look right and that's what I don't like about it is that it, it them adding this has nothing to do with what's in the book and it would just be the writers trying to put hypocrisy on the greens and the greens don't even look good as it is right now right? yes the greens are generally they're somewhat like both sides are bad for the most part, and I, I, I absolutely hate when people have that criticism about the show. It's like, who do I root for? Or am I, can you think for yeah, yourself? Watch, it. Like, watch the show. <laughs> Whichever team out of high towers on, root for that one. Yeah, they, they don't play the good guy music when I'm watching a character, so I don't know which <laughs> exactly, side I want to exactly. be on. Like, dude, holy shit! So, anyways, but if they were to make it this way, uh, you know that Amond is the true father to Helena's children. It would make you think like, oh, look, the Greens are hypocrites because just like Rhaenyra. Their kids are bastards. And you're like, oh, look. So we're both just, you know, uh, just hypocrites at the end of the day. Um, and I don't like that. I'd rather just one side be like, hey, we followed the rules, but we're kind of bad people or like, you're, uh, what do you want to say? Unlikable people. And then there's people you do like, generally speaking, that aren't obeying the rules or kind of bending the rules their way. Right. And it's kind of like, who would I pick? You know, which kind of emotions work on you and what kind of uh, morals do you uh, put value in? Versus the other. Well, factor. yeah, I totally agree. And that's the kind of that's the issue we have with this whole show anyway, is that they're really trying to court. I mean, the show is great. We love this show. It's like one of the best shows running right now like this. And I don't shouldn't say it and or but, you know, it's a really good show. And they're really trying, I think, too hard to telegraph who are the good guys, who are the bad guys. And dude, Rhaenyra sucks ass. But for some reason, they're really trying to make her seem like a good guy. And I think they have been doing that from the beginning. And maybe we'll get a little bit. I guess maybe they could kind of try to turn that around in season two or three or whatever. But as of now, they're really driving hard that Team Black are good, Team Green are bad. They're making Otto into this Littlefinger-esque character, even though he's definitely not that. He's definitely intelligent, but he's not that. So, yeah, I agree. I think there needs to be a little bit less heavy-handed with all of that stuff. Like, come on. It's supposed to look so irresponsible that Aegon's 
shooting right into the crowd. But that's the nectar of life. That's the nectar of life. I get it's like manna falling from the sky when Moses brought the Jews across right. the desert before. It's like those people in Flea Bottom. When's the last time you think they had anything in their mouth at that level of nutrient? Like the salt, well, the protein. Okay, logistically, his his seed isn't well, when he's doing off the balcony. He's not hitting flea bottoms, hitting everybody in the red keep. So, I, dude, you have no idea how far he can shoot, man. His <laughs> prostate, his <laughs> prostate's <laughs> like uh, that. He's the Chris Brumstead of prostates. Okay, Olympia champion. Uh, okay, so if this is if we're gonna go into the reasons why we think this is true, right? The first one, easiest one we can go to. I think it's episode seven, Drift Mart, the uh, episode where. You see Aegon and Aemon talking their kids, and uh, Aegon is just so disgusted by his sister. He's like, "I don't want to marry her. Yeah. She's, you know, she's a window licker. Based, um, yeah, based. I want, I want her to lick something else, and it's not my window." And Aemon is like, "Dude, I'll, I'll lick her. I'll do whatever she wants. I'll do whatever Mom wants me to do because I love Mama. I love being a duty bound baby boy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know." Well, hey, do you think Allison is in on this too? Like, okay, you, assuming this is true, which I think it is, is Allison is Allison to where? that this is going on or is it something that maybe she's kind of looking the other way at or does she support it like what do you think oh i i think it'd be it would be that that um i think i think allison would be the one to push him in because there's only two conceptions we have with helena and uh either Aegon or amond is the twins with uh the, the the twins and then maylor those two that's the only kids they have so they need two times of conception right so if one of those times is Allison the first time, and then they're like, uh, Abe Munn took up upon himself, like, hey, I gotta, gotta finish. I gotta get a, a an heir and a spare, so I gotta go in there again. Uh -huh. You know. No, right. And see, I mean, maybe she, maybe she greased the wheels. Maybe Allison greased the wheels. I can see that happening. They could be true. And what you just said, I'm glad you mentioned that because that is a huge part of the reason why it's likely that Amond is the father of these kids anyway, because he's the duty bound one. Aegon is not duty bound whatsoever. He never does anything responsibly unless he's actually forced to do it. And I have a hard time believing that Alicent would hold his hand to completion with her daughter and son. <laughs> I just don't think it would happen. It'd be much easier to yeah. get Aemon to do it. Whereas we see actually how virile and uh, like testosterone filled Aegon is with all of his bastards at Flea Bottom. So if he really even was doing this with Helena out of duty, I guarantee they'd have more than two kids. They would have several kids, right. and I, I think that's, yeah, for sure, a good point. Yeah, he'd be pumping it, and plus it's like, you know, if you're a guy, you're definitely just going to go to the most convenient spot. Remember when yes. uh, King V was in his chambers, and he was like, uh, yeah, get Allison in here. I need to get one off, and we also need to make kids, so that's what he'd probably do, and you get him drunk enough, right? And that's what, okay, so there's the other uh, scene, which we're going to go to next, which kind of segues, in, segues into my point here, that when Helena is speaking in episode eight, when she's giving that toast, you know, Aegon looks so embarrassed when she was saying like, marriage isn't all bad, you know, just yeah. he comes to your bedroom every once in a while and you got to do your duty kind of thing. And he looks so embarrassed by it. So there's, there's one thing it was like, dude, I've never, had, I've never even touched this woman and everyone thinks I've, I'm having sex with her. That's like disgusting me. I'll branch off that exact point. Not only that, not only does he look embarrassed by it, but at that same dinner, when I think it was uh, Luke, no, no, it wasn't Luke. It was Jace. When well, Jace, when Jace yeah. actually tries to dance with Helena in order to get at Aegon, Aegon couldn't give two shits. He couldn't <laughs> give two shits. He's yes, like, dude, yes. yeah, you think you're getting at me, dude? I don't give a shit about this bitch. Like, she's the last thing on my mind. I got like four dimes down in Flea Bottom compared to this one. You know what I mean? And Aemon yeah. actually gets pissed off at him, and they start a fight over this girl. It's like you wouldn't get this way over your sister-in-law slash sister biological <laughs> this is biological sister and his sister-in-law i guess at the same mm -hmm, time right and you know you know your brother doesn't care about this girl unless you have a serious personal connection with her and if it, if, if it was just a sisterly thing you wouldn't care if he was dancing with it like this is your cousin would you care if your biological cousin is dancing with your biological sister of course not only if well especially if her husband brother is right next to her and just watch this all happen and he doesn't give a right, shit yeah, like, exactly. why do i care more than unless him? you have personal stake in it unless you're the one who's uh, yeah. you know, taking it to pound school every single day and now it looks like jace might be trying to get in on that or even miming it just to get to you that's what you're gonna have a problem with that is like serious evidence right there dude this is the moment where Eamon goes, dude, I need to step up my game. I need to put a sapphire eye in my, in my oh. eye socket here because because this Jace guy that I fucking hate is taking all, like, he's making Helena laugh and, and feel so happy. He's like, 
so she isn't just like a dead body. There, it's clearly something <laughs> wrong with me. So this might be the uh, the catalyst of all this. Right? Yeah. He's like, dude, this guy is so cool. He's been he got a free pig earlier in life just because out of charisma to play a prank on me. He he's living the life. His hairstyle is awesome. He's only five foot six and he's getting all these chicks, including my chick. I agree with you, dude. This is absolutely the point where he made that decision to put on the full cringe persona because he has that persona, dude. Ever since he lost that oh, eye, yeah, yeah. I think we've mentioned this in a previous video, but he adopted this persona like an edgelord badass. Like maybe he does parkour. You know, he watches a lot of anime or whatever. <laughs> like stuff like that. He really went hardcore into this, and it is just bad. We all know a kid a few years older than us in our high school classes. I guarantee anybody watching this, let us know. A kid a few years older than you in high school who went down this exact trajectory after high school and ended up as a burnout. That's Amon, basically. Yeah. That's Amon. And it would hang out with younger classmates. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, like they buy a, some like <laughs> shitty old house somewhere in the hometown where yep. you live. And then they have parties where they like invite all the now high school kids. But these are people now like six yeah, or seven yeah. years younger and they have hookah parties and shit. Like that definitely happens. So, so two. Uh, Two clues online that other people pointed at was that Eamon walks a little too casually into the chambers in episode nine, into Helena's chambers. Um, mm -hmm. And then also that in that same episode, Eamon like, reaches to protect uh, Helena when Renice's dragon comes up. The, the One of the dumbest scenes in all of House of the Dragon, when Renice does the one million IQ brain move to like, hey, I'm going to. To kill all these civilians in order to make my escape, just yeah, genius. I mean, her brain is two times the size, but I guess that means one half the intelligence. So those are two scenes, and um, th those are pretty good. But in that same episode, this is where I think this this line right here is the reason why I believe this theory to be true. Now, this is you, know, and you mentioned earlier. Eamon directly says, "I'm the next in line to the throne," right? But yes. Eamon studies; he knows for a fact how the line of succession works. But he knows who the real next of line succession is. It's not the children. It's not his bastard children with Helena. It's Eamon. Eamon's it's the him. next in line. So that's what he's he, the he, guy. he legit says it. He knows there are children born right now uh, that would be the next in line if if they were actually Aegon's. But no, Eamon's next in line. He says it there. And then he also stops what he's saying, almost embarrassed by what he's saying. Because uh, maybe he knows he's slipping up a little bit, uh, Sir Christian Cole. Yeah, that could be. I mean, Kristen Cole is not a total idiot. Only when, only when Rhaenyra is around for some reason. Right. And, you know, I've seen online, actually, this, like, stupid theory where Eamon's playing 4D chess. where And it has to do with that same line where he knows that, okay, in, in this scenario that I'm about to describe, assume that Aegon's kids are his actual kids, which we know they're not. They're actually Aemon's, But in this situation, they're Aegon's, okay? Gotcha. He knows that those kids are going to be the ones that would be the heirs after Aegon dies. And so... He intentionally goes to Storm Sand that day and gets Luke killed in order to prompt Damon because he was able to see into the future. Holy and shit. With his blue that eye. Would hide. With his, with his eye. Blue eye. <laughs> right, the one that all of Westeros uh, lives inside. <laughs> the one that, uh, that Damon would hire then people, you know, blood and cheese, Holy to go shit. and kill the children of, uh, of Helena and Aegon, which is just total BS, total BS. Imagine being able to just cross out like 10 of those steps and just go back to, oh yeah, Eamon's been fucking Helena and these are his kids. And it can be revealed then as soon as Aegon dies, for whatever reason, that those kids are not legitimate heirs and it comes to him by law. No one would even care really. It might give the Targaryens a slightly right. worse name, but everybody well, knows they're plugging each other anyway. Yeah, I know, but like no one cared when they're like, fest. Did, didn't we just like uh, swear our fealty to Rhaenyra and now Aegon's king? Okay, whatever. They don't care. And they say this multiple times, I think, in the books and in the TV show uh, in Game of Thrones and House of the Dragons, that a lot of the townspeople really don't give a shit who's king. They just care whether or not their lives are, you know. Um, and I guess that's in real life, too. A lot of people don't even vote in elections, right? They just care whether their day-to-day is fine, and they don't really follow politics and who's really ruling them and what's uh, what's going on. So I don't see why the townspeople would give a shit that Aemond is now king instead of, wait, hold on, didn't Aegon have two kids? They're like, I don't give a shit. Like, fuck. No, they don't give a shit. They don't care. You know what they probably do care about, though? Rhaenys, like one of the key <laughs> figureheads of Team oh, Black, coming up and Xenomorph. killing like thousands of them. Yeah, you know, your kingdom of the crystal skull, mind rays. You know, killing how many people in that chamber and then electing to just not kill Team Green at all. So they get to oh, maintain their power and spread propaganda now that Rhaenys, correct propaganda, by the way, that Rhaenys does not give a shit about the common folk. And then right. she just did, that's just, 
I know that's like a tangential point, but how stupid could you be? I the townsfolk know. are not going to care if Amond is king already, let alone the fact that they're able to use this use this Targaryen radical attack <laughs> against the population <laughs> of King's Landing, right? Like that's mm -hmm. propaganda. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I know there's a lot going on between my brother Aegon and myself. Like rest in peace, Aegon. But turns out his kids aren't legit. I'm the new king. We have to get revenge for basically our 9/11. Right. And if you're a maester and you believe in the maester conspiracy, this is like a wet dream for you. You're like, oh, damn, we always want to get rid of these dragons. And now they just attacked all of these innocent civilians. This is easy. This is an easy day. This is like a, of course, yeah, like a false flag operation. Like, yes, uh, that you could have maybe conducted against your uh, populace. But instead, you can go, OK, cool. They're just willingly doing it now. We didn't have to do anything. Cool. Thank you. Exactly. Exactly. There's so many reasons why, like, uh, this is the, the plan is actually well thought out. Like the plan, okay, regardless of if if it was intentional or not, the plan is well thought out from the part of Team Green. If all of this is true, which we think it is, it works out perfectly. Do you think Otto would have anything to do with it? By the way, if Amon, if these kids are Amons, do you think Otto knows? I think Otto has something to do with it. If or you know, do with it. If uh, if Aegon just refuses. To have sex, or he's just like every time Aegon goes in there, he's like, "Oh, dude, I, I totally finished." He's just faking orgasms inside of right. Helena. She's like, "I can't conceive." And they're like, <laughs> "All right, let's get the let's get the second string quarterback in there and see if he can <laughs> just, just play up the scoreboard." Yeah, let's just just to make sure cover our bases before we start to call our line quits here because that would suck, you know. If if uh, if you married Helena to Aegon, what are you gonna do? Then just Aemon would be king, and then you just got to get another, uh, you know. He has to marry another woman out there, and then you have to spread your power out. No, dude, you got to centralize that high tower power, baby. High T, exactly. Yep, high T power. <laughs> no, I think so too. I think I think Otto's in on it. I think Allison's in on it. I think, or not in on it, but you know they're aware of it. I, I don't know, man. I don't really see a way. See, this is why I said even without like the this this clue, this like revolutionary clue, I was sold on this thing watching it the first time. This was kind of obvious to me, and I might be one of those people. That are conspiratorial and they're looking for things like uh, I'm trying to think of an example of something from another franchise. Well, an off the wall theory that is in Game of Thrones that I don't know how many people actually really believe it that uh, Tyrion is actually a. Oh, yeah, Targaryen. Yeah, like, perfect example. Yes. Like, so many people get on that bandwagon and there's really no real reason, but you can kind of maybe bend rules here or there to make it happen. But this situation, there's more evidence pointing toward this than not. The only evidence we have against Aemond being the father of these kids is that they're introduced as Aegon's kids. And that's it. Like, it's word of mouth only. Everything else points toward the opposite. And they look like them, so I automatically believe them, unlike what I see with uh, Rhaenyra's kids, where it's like, these yes. are Lainor's kids. I'm like, what the hell? Lainor? <laughs> yeah. Alarion? Carl, can you confirm? <laughs> yeah, they look like Carl's kids more than Lainor's. Right, exactly. Like, Jace, we need you to ejaculate in the mouth of Carl, and he can determine whether or not it's the same flavor no, as No, we Lainor. don't need a Carl test this. No. Yes, we do need a Carl <laughs> test. Are you serious? He's trained at the... He's Carl's trained been at, getting uh, this, trying to get his mouth on every single test he can. Uh, trained at the Citadel. He knows how to do this very well. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and smash that like button. Or not. We don't care. <laughs>